It's another day at Freeman's Garage working on the 56 Chevy and we're doing brakes. We're gonna hone and rebuild the original American-made wheel cylinders. We're not putting new ones on because they're not made in the USA. We're gonna do brake shoes. I don't remember if all the brake hardware is behind the drums or not. I guess we'll figure that out when we pull everything apart. We're gonna sandblast and paint. I was hoping we'd be putting a new trunk floor in today. There's a guy that's got one buried in his barn and he said he'd sell it to me, but that hasn't happened yet, so we gotta move on. We can't, we can't sit on our hands. No idle time around here. It's funny I'm even thinking about brakes. When I was in high school, that's the last thing I would have thought about. In fact, my dad made me forced, bought brake line and threw it at me and said, put it on. Yowza! I'll just turn that down a little bit. It's more like it. Can't escape nature. Grabbed a brand new brake hone. This is for honing out our wheel cylinders so we have a nice smooth finish inside of them. And this one is 27 30 seconds to two inches, which is what we need. I just threw one out that I couldn't replace the stones on. That went really smooth, a little too smooth. I have an idea why, I'll, I'll tell you in a second. But all our parts are good. We're gonna be able to clean all that up and reuse it, except for the shoes, of course. And here's the wheel cylinder. These are what we're gonna be rebuilding. Let's see why we need to, to do that. This axle looks great. The splines are straight, they're not twisted. I don't see any cracks. That's a brown recluse. It actually did take me about 20 minutes to get this clip to come through 
the hole in the backing plate. That's the emergency brake cable. The reason why this stuff came apart so nicely on the side is because the axle seal that keeps the gear oil inside the axle keeps it from coming out here and getting all over this stuff. Uh, obviously failed, which is why there is all this oil built up. Took about 10 to 15 minutes to get all the big chunks off all the parts and loosen things up in the nooks and crannies. And now let's let it all soak while we go rip the driver's side off. The second side always goes faster, right? But this isn't covered in oil like the passenger side was. So things might be a little bit more difficult to get apart. Let's see how fast I can do it. I'm hung up on the parking brake cable, just like on the other side. And then yank it on the backing plate to pop the axle out it isn't working on this side. So I want to grab the brake drum and use that on the wheel studs, or what wheel studs we have, for some more pulling power. But the thing is, is the brake drums, they're in there. And I can't open the doors because I got the fenders sitting on there. It's all loose and hanging. And the door can't open, it just catches the fender. So I either got to take all that stuff off, or, which I mean, I'm not afraid of the work, it's just we want to get stuff done. But maybe I could take this and snag on a brake drum down there and yank her out. Don't judge me. We don't have enough giddy up go. And my slide hammer is in a different state. So we'll have to go buy one unless I can think of something else quick here. It doesn't make sense to go get one right now because I'm picking my kid up from school in two hours and it's gonna take 45 minutes at least to go find a slide hammer and buy it and get back here. So. If I can't think of something real quick here, we'll finish cleaning and blast the stuff in the parts washer and then go pick up a slide hammer at the same time I pick up my kid. If I can, if I can find one. All right, it is the next day. Surprise, surprise. There's a parts store in town that's trying to find us a slide hammer. If they do, they'll call us. In the meantime, let's complete the passenger side. I think this is the cleanest dirty side. Found the best kind of paint. Kind you already have. Looks like a brand new can too. And it's exactly what I wanted. Keep things from rusting and then pull the side on. Final coats, colors, down the road.
So those brake parts gotta dry before we can flip them over and pss, the other side. So while we're waiting for that, let's clean up this area here where all that stuff's gonna go back on. I wouldn't be able to sleep if we took those clean parts and crammed them on here. I mean, if it was a tree row revival or emergency road trip type thing, whatever, but this is a Tri-5 Chevy. I cleaned up some of the smaller parts a little bit better with the wire wheel and the drill press and I took apart the adjuster and got all the rust out of it and lubed that up so that's good to go. Let's start uh, putting this corner here back together and then we'll rebuild that wheel cylinder. Who knows how that's going to go. Ooh, you look good. All dressed up and ready to go to town. Come on, spider. Back in you go. Don't worry about us slapping that greasy axle back in there with that nice looking backing plate. This stuff's going to come apart again two or three more times I'm sure to paint the rear end and the leaf springs and do bushings and all that kind of car building stuff. It's the way it is when you're trying to make things nice. We are going to leave that pesky parking brake cable hanging loose though. I don't want to deal with that again when we're not even going to need it yet. I would prefer higher end American made brake shoes, but these were kind of a right time, right place, right deal kind of thing. They pretty much gave them to me. And plus, look, they're 100% new and premium. This car has 11 inch brakes, but the width of the shoe is different front and rear. In the front you have a wider two inch shoe and then in the rear you have a narrower one and three quarter inch shoe or 1.75 as the 1956 GM manual states. Something I'm not really liking about these shoes other than the build quality not being quite the best appearing anyways is that typically you have a primary shoe that goes towards the front of the car which would go here and that shoe is shorter and then your secondary shoe goes on the towards the rear and that shoe is longer. This is the first Tri-5 I've built and tore into and so I, I would expect that, I was expecting that to be the case. Looking through all the GM documents should be what this is but these shoes are the same length. But I've seen this before with today's aftermarket stuff that they're selling out there. So I think we'll be okay. If we try it, we won't have to wonder anymore. Oh no! I forgot about the parking brake. You gotta get this off of here. This is where the parking brake cable goes into, right here in that slot. You gotta get this off and do more grease scrubbing, blasting, painting. Dang it, I don't have time for this. Okay, so that's all together. Turned out real nice. Took a little bit of time, not too bad though. I had to rip everything off the backing plate though to get this together, so. Starting over. All right, it's time. We gotta rebuild this thing. Now, as long as we don't have any issues getting this apart, we should be able to do this very quickly. Do you want the good news or the bad news first? Let's start with the good news. She cleaned up pretty good on the outside and we got some writing. 
Delco Moraine Production, Dayton, Ohio, USA. That's American manufacturing right there. That's what I like to see. Now about that bad news. Do you hear that? That's a U.S. Army helicopter. Either a Black Hawk or an Apache. Go get them, boys. Now about that bad news. She's completely froze up. I've soaked her for a couple hours and beat on her, banged on her, and she's just, she just doesn't want to come apart today. And what I thought was going to take one afternoon to get done ended up taking me two full days, and it's after five o'clock, and I got people to feed. But this is the real world. This isn't make-believe. The break saga will continue. It's two days later, family obligations kept me off the car, but right now we've got a slide hammer and an axle puller that's going to be ready to be picked up at the parts store in an hour and a half's time. While we're waiting to go pick the tools up, let's get that wheel cylinder rebuilt that's been soaking for two days. Hopefully she comes apart. Hmm. I was hoping it would just fall right apart. So right now we're pushing the piston and the seal, which is compressing the spring inside here and should push the seal and the piston out like a baby rhino being born. We ran out of real estate. We're not quite there. Almost. I need to use this deep well. So what I did is I used this end of the socket, the flatter end, to push up against the piston. That way there would be less chance of it going crooked and breaking it, like as if you were using this end here. So that was in like that, and then this piece was on here just to keep everything flat and level. It's compressed the spring and everything. And then on this end she's just about out, and you can see some of the crud that's been holding her in place. Put a little more lube on this end and it sure is helping. Woo! Love it. So this is all that's inside here. It's just a spring. And then these are rubber seals, not like the swimming kind. These go on the ends. Of course the fluid comes in through your brake line, which threads in right here. And then here's where your bleeder screw screws into. And there's just tiny little passages in there for the fluid to move. And then these two threaded holes here is just for the hardware that bolts it to the backing plate. Jumping Jehoshaphat, this thing needs a home job. First thing I'm going to do is blow out these passages with some brake cleaner. Ooh yeah, look at that. Chunks of stuff in there. We're also going to clean out the inside of the bore. Get as much junk and stuff and rusty debris and whatever out of here. That way when we run our stone hone through here, we don't uh, just grind grease and nasty stuff or whatever's in here into the stones and then render them useless or just grind junk into the metal itself. Use some brake fluid as some lube. And here we go. Looking good already, just want to make sure we keep it lubricated. Oh, I'm trying not to do that. I don't want to overdo it, but there is a little bit of pitting in here that we need to work out. 
Really just trying to do the, the bare minimum in here and just get a good cross hatch, nice and smooth. There is some pitting left in here. It's only in the very middle where the seals and the pistons don't reach, just the spring rides in that area. Where the important stuff rides on the ends here. We got a nice cross hatch. It's smooth as baby's new butt. I'm trying to straighten out these metal pieces that go on the ends of the spring. A little bit of a sharp edge. There we go, that's good. Get out of here, Skeeter. Painted this when you weren't looking. And then I cleaned the, these bits and pieces up with the wire wheel and the drill press. All right, assembly time. That's where it all pays off. Lube this up with some brake fluid. And then we will lube up our seals. No way nothing rips or tears. Put a seal in. And we'll put a piston in. These two things together, and then we'll put our spring in, put our other seal in. Oh, come on. Okay, so we got our spring and we got both of our Dan seals in. Probably didn't get that joke, but... Oh! Pop goes the weasel. And we'll find out if all this stuff even works. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was gonna try to make a joke, but then it wasn't gonna be funny. Alright, there we go. And then these are seals that go on the outside. Come on. Do what you're told. There we go. 1956 wheel cylinder restored. say it's about time to go pick up that tool and no mercy on this axle this time this girl's coming out
it's four sticks right now and I gotta have another car in here in the morning. I might need to throw the left rear tire on and kick all the tools off to the side and drop this thing down on the dollies, turn it sideways, slide her up against the wall here. Days start out at 5 a.m. at Freeman's Garage so I can get that other car in here, do what I need to do to it, get it done, get it out, and then pull the 56 back out again and get that dang axle out. Cancel that. I'm still out here. I don't know why I didn't think about this just a few minutes ago, but I switched from using this hole to using that hole and it was able to give me a little bit more room around the polar here to where I can actually tighten both the lug nuts down so one doesn't pop off. And I think that's going to give us a little bit more pulling force. Let's give her a few more Yankarooskis and hopefully it comes out. Well, holy Willie Nelson, son of a gun, axle polar slide hammer, you sly little cur dog, you. She's a bones a dry. That's why. Man, this thing is as dry as Lake Mead. Must have been doing a lot of left turns. All the oil's on the passenger side. She's chewed up on the end. Is she running dirt track or what? Well, hit her in the morning. Good morning, it's about 20 after five. I wanna get everything done on this car by eight. So call that two and a half hours so I can get that other car in here I was talking about. It's gonna be a blitzkrieg, but hey, I'm rejuvenated. Of course I didn't get all that done by 8 a.m. That's why we're over by the wall here. I knew that was gonna happen, but I like to challenge myself. I didn't even bother taking the left rear off again because one of the retainer springs crumbled in my hands. A little too rusty. Which is why we're up at the left front now, and guess what? The same thing happened. I barely touched it and it broke right in half. At the beginning of this brake escapade, we knew that we needed parts for the right front. You knew that because you've been following this build. So the goal really was to complete three out of four corners. And after all this, the right rear is the only one that got done. Looks like the end of the road for the moment, fellas. But that's a good thing because now we get to go to the junkyard. 